Hi guys, it's Ashley from Leather Company, and today I'm going to show you how to take your yarn hank and turn it into a yarn ball without any specialty tools. So this is really super important when you do get a yarn hank, and typically you're going to get a yarn hank. If you've purchased hand dyed yarn, it's going to come in the form of a hank. You're going to want to turn this into either a ball or a cake before you start crocheting with it or knitting. You do not want to work with the yarn when it is still in the form of a hank because you are running the risk of having a huge tangled mess and we don't want that. So to do this, we are going to need a few supplies. Now I said we're gonna be doing this without any specialty tools, but you are gonna still need a few things that you have laying around your house. You're going to need your hank, of course. You're also gonna need something to that's sturdy to put in the middle. Um, I'm using a yarn ball, yarn bowl because it is fitting for this, but any kind of bowl or glass jar or anything good and sturdy um, that's not too large, um, you're gonna need that. You're also gonna need a pair of scissors and your hand. That's all you're going to need to take your yarn hank and turn it into a yarn ball. So let's get started. I'm going to move our yarn cake out of the way here. And when you get a yarn hank, um, it can come in a variety of sizes. So this is a 100 gram skein um, of avocado and it's a DK base. So this has about 231 yards. Um, these are our mini skeins and this has, um, this is a 20 gram skein. So it only has about 49 yards. So to equal one skein of this, we would need about five of these. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do this with a mini skein. The process is going to be the same. I'm just gonna show you how to do this on a smaller scale. So I'm gonna set these to the side. And what we want to do is take our, whatever our nice, strong, sturdy piece is, is put that in the middle. And then we want to grab our hank here. Now, I want you to kind of look at this as this is the top and this is the bottom. And we want to untwist this. So to do that, we just want to push that back through and open this up. Okay. So we have this big loop here. Now, this is something important to know, and this will vary depending upon um, the dyer and uh, things like that, but there are typically going to be somewhere between one to three ties on your skein of yarn. There can be more, um, but if you purchase Leather Co. yarn, whether it is from our store or in our subscription box, you're going to probably have about three ties on your skein of yarn. And there are three different ones, um, and we're gonna go over that in a minute. But to get this ready, after you've untwisted this, I want you to put it on your two hands and stretch it out a bit. And make sure that the yarn is going around straight and not twisted. If it is twisted, it's going to be twisted when you go to try to wind this up. So just kind of going around a circle, make sure it is on your hands, nice and straight, okay? And then I want you to place that around the middle, um, place it around whatever your middle piece is here. Now, let's talk about the yarn ties that are on here. You're going to want to find these first. Now, if you purchase our yarn, you're going to have probably three, and there's going to be only one tie that has four strands. All the other ones are going to have four. So this one has four, and what I wanna do is I just wanna swoosh this around and make sure that the four is near me, and this is just gonna make it easier here in just a little bit. And then I want to find the other two that have two strands. So there's one, and then there's the other one over on this side. So to start, I'm going to remove the ones with the two strands first. And the reason is, is this one here with your four strands, that one is going to have the beginning and the end of your um, hank here. 
and we want to do this last um, just to make sure that we know where it is and um, we're going to be starting right back at that. So to do this, I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to remove the tie here. Now this is something to get in a good habit of and this is something I've kind of trained myself to do is that when I do go to remove any of these ties, I cut right under this knot here. And I'll show you why in just a little bit when I do the last one. Um, but when you go to cut this, just cut it right under that knot. Okay. And then you're going to remove your figure eight tie here. Okay. And then we don't need that anymore. And then we're going to repeat that process on this other tie. And if there are more ties, you will keep repeating this um, until you have all the extra ties removed. So I'm going to, again, cut this right under that knot. I don't need that anymore. And I'm just going to pull out the figure eight tie right here. Now these ties are put on here. Um, they do have a purpose they are used for when the yarn is getting dyed so that they do not, the strands of the yarn do not get tangled up. It keeps it nice and organized. So there is a point to having all these ties on the skein of yarn when you get it. So now we are to the strand, the tie here, that has four. And the reason I wanted this to be closest to you is because when we start winding this, um, it's a lot easier if it's here versus over there. And we want to keep everything in place since we have no ties on these other strands anymore um, to keep it from having a tangled mess. So the reason that we want to get in the habit of cutting right below the knot is that for the one that has the four strands here, this has the beginning and the ending of the skein. So if you cut you know, further down here, you're going to be losing a little bit of yardage and we don't want you to have to play yarn chicken. So if you cut just below that knot, you're going to get as much yardage as possible in your skein of yarn. So now for this one, we're going to, it's kind of hard to tell which one is which, the figure eight or the beginning and ending strand, but I'm going to pull out the figure eight here and then I'm going to find my two strands. Okay, so there they are. Now, you want to make sure whatever you were using as your centerpiece here is good, it's sturdy, and it's going to stay here in the middle. And the reason is, is that when you do start to wind this up, you may find that your yarn is going to want to pull this way or pull this way. And if you don't have something here in the middle, it can become tangled very, very easily. So make sure that your piece stays here in the middle. And um, now we're ready to wind it up into a ball. So you can go either way. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise with winding this into a ball. But what I like to do, and it will vary by skein, is of course find my two ends and see which one is going to kind of start off winding up easier. So that seemed pretty easy. This one seems like it's going to be going down below. So I am going to wind this up going clockwise because it seems like the this end is going to be on top. So to do this is very simple. I've got my strand here and you're going to want to start with wrapping this around your hand um, until you feel like you've got a good amount there. Um, so you can either wind this up as you go around in a circle, so you're kind of just wrapping and going around, or you can take it and just take a little bit at a time and pull it here towards you in the middle. Because you're just doing a little bit, it's not gonna become a tangled mess, but uh, there's either way you can do that. So I've got a little bit here, and I'm gonna start by wrapping it around all four of my fingers here, and not too tight, but just enough to kind of get it started. I might need to get a little more yarn. Okay. So I've got, let's see, 
four, six, eight, somewhere around 10, 12 wraps around my hand. This is completely up to you and all the skeins will be different depending upon how thick it is, how thin it is. So that will vary. But since this is a DK skein of yarn, about 10 to 12 wraps around the first time is perfect. So now that I've got this started, I'm now going to want to take this and turn this into um, a smaller piece. So I'm going to slide this off my hand and I'm going to twist it like a figure eight and then have those ends match up. Okay. And then I'm just going to want to hold this into a little itty bitty, like a little squish here. And now I'm going to, as I go around, go ahead and get a little more yarn out and ready. Um, I'm then just going to wrap around my little skein of yarn. And again, depending upon the yarn weight, uh, will determine how many times you wrap around. But I'm going to start with going around about 10 times um, with my DK weight. So I've I've kind of lost count, but I want to say I do one around 10 times. And now I'm going to rotate it the other way. And then I'm going to wrap 10 times this way. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, kind of running out of yarn. So I'll pull more around. And then I'm going to rotate again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, and as you can see, it's it, when you start out, it's going to be a little bit of a mess here, and that's okay. The more we add, um, we're going to then start to really look like a ball here in just a moment. So I've rotated again, and I'm going to wrap 10 more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more yarn, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And let's rotate again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now we do start to have a ball forming in here. So instead of rotating completely to the opposite side, I'm now just going to rotate just a little bit to go in between and cross over. So now I'm going to wrap again 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Making sure I've still got yarn to come around. And then rotate just a little bit again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Grab a little more yarn. And again, like I said before, you can either just pull the yarn around to you or go and wind it in a circle. But I'm going to stay in place to do mine. So we've got a little bit more of a ball forming. And I'm going to rotate again here and wrap 10 more times. One, two, three, four, oops, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now as my ball is starting to get bigger, I'm going to start wrapping a little less. So I'm going to cut that in half. And again, this is going to vary depending upon the yarn weight, but this would be a good guide if you're using a DK weight or worsted weight. Um, for bulky, I would do less wraps. Um, and for fingering and sock weight or fingering and sport weight, you could do um, the same amount of wraps or less. So now I'm going to wrap around my ball 10 times. I mean, five times, five times. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then occasionally so that it's not egg shaped, you are going to want to just give it a little bit of a squish to kind of keep it into the ball form. So I've rotated just a smidge and I'm going to wrap five more times. Okay. Rotate again. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Rotate again. One, two, three, four, five. And then you can just kind of hold it in place as you get your yarn 
ready some more and occasionally you're going to need to just make sure that your yarn is staying in line and it is spread out around whatever your center piece is here so let's keep wrapping one two three four five rotate one two three four five and do a little squish to keep it in the form of a ball one two three four five rotate one two three four five oh. let's go around get some more yarn out here okay remember keep it spread out okay so I've rotated one two three four five rotate one two three four five rotate a little bit one two three four five and rotate and squish and we're just going to keep repeating this until we run out of yarn now um, it is important to rotate as you're winding so that it does come out into a ball and it's going to be even um, with a small 20 gram skein of yarn, which is what I'm winding up now. This is going to go a lot quicker versus using a 100 gram skein like our avocado here, but this process is going to be exactly the same. So let's keep going. So I've rotated and now let's wind five more times. Three, four, five, rotate, one, two, three, four, five, grab some more yarn. Now, if you are using a yarn ball, it might try, or yarn bowl, it might try and go in there, but that's okay. We're just going to keep it. This is the reason why we want to keep this in place because as you can see, it's starting to try and become a tangled mess, but we can still use this without any specialty tools. So we're just going to keep going until we run out of yarn. Three, four, five, rotate, one, two. Yep, keep it sitting on there now. Three, four. Okay, so if this happens, it seems as though it's trying to tangle up here. I'm going to still keep my center here, but the good thing about having this as a yarn ball is I can kind of put it through wherever it's twisting up and keep it in line, okay? So I've untangled whatever it was trying to knot up. So you need to be aware of when it is starting you feel like if it's the yarn is not coming to you easily as you wind it into a ball, um, do check and see why. It's easier to fix the problem when it's just a little tangle versus you've pulled it tight and you've got a knot. So I was able to do that while still holding my yarn ball in my hand and not losing its shape and untangling it. So let's keep going. Just like just keep swimming, just keep winding it into a ball. So I'm going to make sure I wrap and then do a little smush. And then as you add more yarn around here, so as you saw those first few wraps there looked a little messy and that's okay. That's going to be in the center. No one is going to see it. It's going to be hidden in there. Um, and that's okay. But as we start to add more and we're actually working around a ball shape instead of this odd, whatever that previous shape was, it's going to be easier to put it on here and you can wind it so that they line up right next to each other. So you could then wrap it so that you've got how many of our wraps you're doing with strands in a nice little row there and then squish turn repeat two 
three, four, and five. Okay, so I feel another, see how it's starting to go and try and tangle in here like this. So it's good to pay attention, like I said, to that, because I'm just going to take my yarn ball and I'm going to go through that little tangle and then keep going around and just be aware of what it's doing in here. So I'm going to go through that again. Just take your time. The biggest thing with this is patience. When you are doing this by hand, you don't have a swift that's opening, opening it up and holding it nice and open. And when you use a swift, it doesn't, the yarn's not gonna move. When you do this by hand on a hard surface, it is going to move around. So, it is easy to wind it into a ball. You just have to be super patient with it. Okay, so, Let's keep going. Two, three, four, five. Rotate. One, two, three, four, five. Rotate. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I feel like I'm getting a little egg shape going on here. I'm gonna get a little squished down. Grab some more yarn. And it's trying to tangle on me again. So I'm going to go through where it's tangling up and then it's trying to do it again over here. So I'm just going to go through there, holding my ball in place and there's another one. So let's go through here. Okay, pull this back out apart and keep going. Okay, so we've rotated and we're wrapping five times, rotating and wrapping five times. And this is pretty much the idea. We just go around in a circle, make sure we don't have a tangled mess, and wind it into a ball. And once we're done, we're gonna be ready to crochet or knit with it. Okay. Going through here, through there. Okay. So I'm about done here. Got my last little bit. And the biggest thing with this is patience um, and being able to do this with a fresh mind. Um, it is very doable and very easy to do, um, but because your yarn is going to try and move while you're doing this um, and you know it's not staying in place like it would on a Swift, it's going to take a lot of patience um, and you don't want to yank on the yarn tight because it can cause a tangled mess. Um, we just want to take our time and you can wind this into a ball without any specialty tools. Again, this is a 20 gram skein, but the process would work with any yarn weight. And then you'll just take your tail and go ahead and tuck it in until you're ready to work with it. And now I have a yarn ball. So thanks so much for watching. This is how you take a yarn hank and turn it into a yarn ball without any specialty tools with the exception of some scissors, something to place in the middle, your yarn hank, and of course your hand. Um, that's all you need to do this. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, grab your yarn, your hooks, and get hooked.